Today, I'm comparing the Sony Xperia XZ3 versus the OnePlus 6T in a camera comparison shootout. So the Xperia XZ3 is rocking just a single shooter, but it's pretty impressive. And the OnePlus 6T is rocking a double barrel shooter, which is also really impressive. But anyway, I'm gonna be taking some photos here in the park, and then I'm gonna be ending this video in central London, next to the River Thames, somewhere around Tower Bridge at night. So you're gonna see night shots as well. And in the middle of this video, we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at the pro modes on both phones. And guys, if you're finding me for the first time, consider subscribing if you like smartphone reviews, smartphone comparisons, and all kinds of other tech-related stuff. And turn on those notifications so you know when my next video goes live. But anyway, shall we begin? Let's begin. Okay, so here's the first photo shot on the rear cameras on both the phones. And it was quite a crisp spring day here in London. And you can see the difference here in the photos on the left, you're getting slightly higher contrast, slightly cooler photo. On the right, we're getting slightly deeper oranges there, especially in the trees and on the dog herself. When it comes to detail, if we zoom in, you can really see here, both cameras do a great job. And you can especially see the detail there in the left-hand side of the photo on the OnePlus 6T. On the Xperia XZ3, you're getting that bokeh effect. If you look in the background, the trees behind the dog are much more blurred and on the left hand side on the OnePlus 6 they're much more crisp. Which one won this first shootout? Now let's move on to the next picture which is a selfie of me pulling a stupid face and you can see a real difference here between the two cameras. On the left there's a lot of brightness on my face you can see a lot of detail there whereas on the right on the Xperia XE3 a much darker photo in general but slightly more blue up there in the sky. Side by side if you had to pick one, which one wins the selfie shootout? Now onto a video stabilization test. shot directly into the sunlight to show you how the two cameras handle these really harsh conditions and you can see there on the right hand side on the Xperia XZ3 the sun is actually blowing out all of the color in the sky almost completely but in the foreground you're getting this really nice sort of stylized picture with the oranges and the sun shining off the lake on the left hand side a much cooler photo much more detail in the sky and also great detail in the lake if you were to pick one of these which one would you say done better in this harsh lighting condition? So here's another shot of the dog and this was to demonstrate how much detail and color the two cameras pick up. So here we have two very different types of images. On the left, very, very cool colors. On the right, very, very warm colors again. And if we zoom right into the dog's eye, you can really see the difference in the color reproduction on both the cameras. Both are providing great details, but which one wins? Let me know in the comments below. All right guys, so how good are the two phones doing right now? Front facing photos, rear facing photos. There's a poll up in the corner that you can answer. And when you do, you'll be able to see what everyone else is saying about the photos as well. But anyway, this is the Xperia XZ3. How's the mic sounding? 
How's the video on that front facing camera? Let's switch to the OnePlus 6T. So this is the OnePlus 6T front facing video. How's the audio compared to the Xperia XZ3? Also, is the stability noticeably different and the colors? So leave that in the comments below. And I think we're about to wrap up here in the park. I'll take one more landscape shot for you guys and then back to the lab to test the pro modes on both phones and then into central London to do some night shots for you guys. Let's go. So here's the last photo shot in the park and the sun was sort of shining across this field. And what you can see here, again, great detail in the foreground on both cameras. A little bit blurring there in the bottom left corner on the OnePlus 6T, but much better colors in the sky. On the Xperia XZ3, you're getting this kind of whited out area right at the top of the photo, where it's losing quite a lot of detail, but a very nice warm picture here. Both of the cameras did really good here, but which one's better? Let me know. And now let's move on to the pro camera tests. Okay, so now onto the camera pro section of the video where we're gonna dive into the settings, the pro settings on the Xperia XZ3 first. So you can find the pro settings down here, this little icon, and straight away, menus up on the side. You can look at the settings here. There's a bunch of stuff you can change, like the resolution. The highest is 19 megapixels, four by three, which I'm gonna leave it on for now. You've also got a bunch of other stuff like focus and brightness by touching the screen, metering, which I've set to spot, if you're doing a landscape, you might want to change this or if it's a face you want to focus on. But in this case, we're just going to do spot. Auto capturing lens correction, which I've got on image quality at the moment. You've also got touch to capture. I've turned on the grid lines just so we can sort of center this up nicely. And there's a bunch of other stuff in there you can mess around with too. So there's a smile shutter, auto preview. You can use the camera key to do burst photos as well, which I'm not gonna do right now. And there's a help section there, which takes you through to a web page, which will give you help on the camera settings. And you'll see on the left here, I've set it to HDR as well. No flash, no timer. Now let's look at the actual settings. So auto focus, right now, as standard, it's on auto. What we can actually do here is manually adjust the focus and get it just right for this picture. So about there is giving us a little bit of that blurry background feel. So I'm gonna keep it there. Next up is shutter speed. So if you adjust the shutter speed, basically what you can do is capture fast moving objects. So indicated by the little running man up here. But if you're shooting a stationary subject, you can actually use a longer exposure. And the longest exposure we can do on the XE3 is one second. So I'm gonna take a real quick photo now with the blind down with a one second exposure so you guys can kind of see what this does so that's a long exposure there not as long as some of the other phones i've looked at recently you can do up to 30 seconds on the mate 20 and the view 20 but we're going to check out the oneplus straight after this so you can see the difference there so for the sake of this photo i actually like it about there which is one one thousandth of a second you can go all the way up to one four thousandth of a second as well, but you can see it makes the picture quite dark. So let's leave it there, one one thousandth of a second. Next up is ISO. So this is another way you can adjust the brightness of the photo. But if you go very, very high with an ISO, you'll actually get a lot of noise in the picture. So if it's really dark, you can use this to brighten your picture up. But I recommend you try and select as low an ISO as you can. That way you don't lose too much detail in the photo. So 50 to 12,800 is the ISO range on the XE3. Now next up is exposure levels, and you can actually only change these properly if you set the ISO to auto. So I'll just show you that now. What you can do with the exposure level is actually darken and brighten the picture. And I'm gonna set the exposure level to about there, which is minus one. Now the last thing is white balance. At the moment it's on auto. You can set it to overcast, kind of shadowy, white balance. You can set it to natural light, white balance, and you can also set it to incandescent and artificial light. I'm a little bit disappointed there isn't a manual adjustment here, but I think this picture looks pretty good how it is right now. So let's take this photo. All right, so now let's look at the pro settings on the OnePlus 6T, which can be found if you swipe across or swipe up, depending on which way you have the phone, and hitting pro mode here. Now, one of the great additions that OnePlus have added in here, which I think is really, really useful, is the histogram at the top 
and also the horizontal spirit level there as well and you can see it's perfect right now if we tilt it it goes off this is really really useful for composing a good picture now there's some other stuff you can do here like actually add the grid lines so if we swipe across and go to settings you can see there's a bunch of stuff here grid line we'll set it to four by four sorry this is all sideways you've also got golden ratio there as well you've got four by four three by three let's actually use the golden ratio and there's a bunch of other stuff you can do here like quick capture and stuff like that smile capture all kinds of cool stuff invert photo but anyway back into the pro settings you can see down the side here you can change the ratio of the picture here top left corner going to keep it on four by three you've got timer you've got the raw toggle here as well so you can switch off raw or switch it back on i'm going to leave it on raw but now let's look at the actual settings you can adjust here so the iso range goes from 100 to 3200 which isn't bad at all the great thing about this you got this nice little dial down the side which i really really like there i'm going to keep it on auto for the moment next thing is the white balance and you can see it's constantly adjusting here because it's on auto what i like to do with the white balance is have it around 5000 around about that point there now next up is the focus mode here you can adjust the type of focus you get here about there perfect one of the differences between this and the Sony is you're not getting quite as much blur in the background, but still this looks very, very sharp. So then you've got the exposure levels and you can only adjust these if you don't mess around with the ISO. So what the exposure level is gonna do, boost up the brightness, darken it a bit. I actually like this slightly darker about there. Now shutter speed is really, really awesome on the OnePlus 6. So you've got one eight thousandth of a second, which is faster than the Sony and you can also do a long exposure at 30 seconds so even if it's pitch black you're still going to be able to take a photo and i'm going to show you that now and i'll close the blinds close the curtains and take a photo in pitch black all right so there you go there's the photo there was a little bit of light coming off the screen but you get the idea in pitch black you can still pick up a photo with a long exposure but you will need to use a tripod if you try and do this by hand it's just going to look horrible but anyway really really awesome and that pretty much is the pro mode on the oneplus 60 which one of these do you think is better and why leave that in the comments below i'm going to take one last photo here with my manual settings and you can see these side by side now next stop the river thames all right now on to the low light segment of the video and this photo was shot from exactly the same spot of the hms belfast which is that warship you see there it's no longer in action and tower bridge in the background now two completely different photos here on the left hand side you see quite a nice picture there quite good detail in the sea good amount of brightness there and on the right hand side on the xperia xe 3 i would argue there's a little bit more detail in the water in the foreground the lights are slightly blowing out the contrast around the ship and tower bridge itself side by side these are two completely different photos and it's really hard to choose which one is better that's why i want you guys to let me know what you think about these photos and let's just zoom in on the hms belfast a bit closer on the same photo so you guys can see the amount of detail in these photos so within the same photo let's zoom into the tower bridge and you can see there the difference in colors and brightness and detail and let's move on to a photo actually shot from the tower bridge walkway itself of the shard it was incredibly cold it was raining it was pretty horrible that's why it's not very sharp but you guys can get a good idea of what these two cameras can do here it's not the most exciting photo in the world which one looks better to you so here's the very very last photo of the day when i was on my way home that's actually a moving train there both phones are actually capturing that train while it's moving and also you can see all the snow coming down at the same time which one's doing better here in this extremely harsh condition with a moving object. All right guys, so that's it. That's the end of the video and it is raining and it's cold. This is England. This is England. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this video. Which one won this camera shootout? Which one would be better for you if you're into photography? 
so that's it from London Tower Bridge and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video a bit different from other ones it's a lot colder than Dubai um, but yeah anyway hit the thumbs up subscribe turn on those notifications if you enjoyed it for more videos like this in the future see you guys in the next one don't be late